Hello beautiful people, how's it going? Welcome to my floor. Today I'm going to share with you how I furnished and decorated my studio apartment for under $100. Yes, seriously. And how hopefully you can too with these tips and strategies. I recently shared my tour of this whole apartment, so if you want a full tour of an entirely secondhand and DIY artsy boho studio apartment, go check that out. I will link it up here and in the description. I do want to say, of course, there is some luck and privilege involved, and I'm going to go into that later. But I promise you, there will be no surprise reveal partway through that my, like, secret strategy is just that. My parents paid for it. Oh, also, I'm not going to be including my kitchen and my bathroom in this video just because they're, like, really tiny and empty and boring. Uh, but the same tips apply to those spaces, too. Okay, with all of that out of the way, here is how I furnished and decorated my apartment for under $100. Tip number one, the most obvious, is use what you already have. Now normally I find it so annoying when people say this because then they reveal that they already had like almost all their stuff and it's all super nice and expensive and it's like, okay, that's not helpful to um, the rest of us. However, sometimes when people are moving into a new space, they feel like they should just replace everything just because they want this whole new vision. But you definitely can still get the effect in a space that you want without replacing every furniture item you have. I really did hardly have any of my furniture when I moved in here, but the couple things I did have are my lamp, my shoe rack, and my little square shelving unit in my closet. All of these things are very simple, not particularly cute, but they all serve the purpose that I need them to serve. I don't need to replace them, and so I didn't. Oh, and then the final items that I already had were just some of my decor pieces. The vast majority of those were already thrifted anyway. All right, my next tip, another obvious one, don't buy things you don't need. I love my apartment, but of course it could be cuter and trendier and nicer. Honestly, I sort of made it a personal mission to get everything for as little as possible. Like I was trying to be like, can I do this for under $100? So that was a great motivator not to buy like the cute, nice new pieces. That okay, tip number three, look at thrift stores. Now we all know this one. But I would like to push it a little further and say, if there's something that you don't like need, but you just want in your space, maybe set yourself a little challenge where you will not buy it unless you find it secondhand or for a certain price. That's what I did with my big mirrors, uh, my planters for some of my plants, and a good amount of my other home decor. The real key to thrifting is not just to be like, oh, I'll check there first, and if they don't have it, let me go firsthand. Make it your primary source. You have to check back multiple times. You have to go to multiple locations. By the way, another sort of version of this tip would be to use like Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, those like free buy nothing trade groups that they have on Facebook. I haven't done that for anything in my apartment currently, but it seems like that works for a lot of people. So just thought I'd throw that out there. All right, these next two tips are really how I got the majority of my stuff for free. So these are the key ones to pay attention to that will save you the most money. The first tip is to ask around about things that you need. Ask your family, ask your friends, ask your friends to ask their parents, ask your parents to ask their friends, ask your coworkers, your roommates, your aunts, uncles, cousins, your, I don't know, post on Facebook and say you're looking for this item. Truly, if you expand your search to your entire social network, you will be shocked what people are willing to give you. My belongings that I've gotten for free from just asking around include my dining table and the four chairs that go with it, my bookshelf and my comforter on my bed, my other mirror and my large area floor rug. Also, this isn't furniture or decor, but I got my sewing machine from, I think someone in my mom's book room. All these things were given to me for free, which is very gracious and kind, but you could definitely also ask around if anyone wants to sell anything to you. That might be a little bit more incentive, but you can still get it for way cheaper than you might elsewhere. All right, tip number five, my other key tip, take furniture from the side of the road. This is especially easy during times of year when lots of people are moving, like the end of summer in like a college town. That's how it is in my city, and I imagine everywhere doesn't have quite that culture. But I don't think there is anywhere in the United States where there is not sometimes furniture left on the curb. You just gotta be looking for it, and you gotta grab it when the opportunity presents itself. Also, you could definitely try driving to areas in your city where rich people live or are known to like put their stuff out on the curb and uh, go on a little hunt to take their old stuff. 
But I mean, I don't have a car and I just dragged <laughs> all the stuff that I found on the curb home myself walking. So that works too. The items in my apartment that I got from the side of the road include my bed frame, my bedside table, and my console table, which I didn't even think I was gonna get one. I wanted one so much, but I was like, I don't need one. So I'm gonna wait around, see if one shows up for the right price. And lo and behold, found one for free on the side of the road. Okay, my next tip is more for decor, although it could also apply to furniture, and that is to repurpose things. I'm gonna show you my gallery wall so I can like show you what I mean. So. This may look like a collection of art prints, but less than half the pieces up here are actually meant to be hung on the wall as art. And I will explain what they actually are. This one right here is a card. This is a wallpaper sample, which online wallpaper companies will send you for free. This was a gift from my mom. This is a page that I tore out of a vintage photography book that I believe I got secondhand for like $2. This wall hanging I made myself. Uh, this is a card. That's a card. That's a card. That is some art my friend made me when I have a letter she sent me. This is an old calendar page. This, 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 and this are all cards. This I made myself. This is an old um, council poster card that I got from my dorm freshman year college. And these two are from actual local artists. And uh, I will put their stuff in the description. I highly recommend checking them out because they both make excellent work. Things that aren't really meant to be art will look like art if you hang them on your wall with confidence. My final tip, which was also exhibited in some of the pieces on the gallery wall, is to DIY. Now, I know what you're thinking. Liz, you're an artist. We're not all artists. We can't all just whip up a painting or a wall hanging. But lucky for you, minimalist and abstract art are so in, so trendy, they will make you look cool and up to date, and they also happen to be the easiest thing to make. Here's some minimalist art examples for inspiration. These are also all available to buy online on like Etsy. I'll link them all in the description. Obviously also don't just like copy these people's art exactly and try to pass it off as your own or try to sell it or anything. Like we know this. But DIY doesn't just apply to art. Oh no, you can also DIY things like a lampshade out of paper you already had around or a little bench out of wood you found on the side of the road and some wood glue that uh, someone lent you, but you don't remember who. All right, this leaves us with just a couple unaccounted for items in the cost tallying. First, the plants I have acquired since living here, which is all of them. I wasn't a plant girl before, but now I am. I bought um, all of them from a local greenhouse store. They total to $43. Plants are cheaper than I expected them to be. Just a side note. The other thing is my string lights, which I actually forgot about in my apartment tour. They are from Amazon. So I lied. It wasn't a hundred percent secondhand thrifted DIY. That's the only thing though. And you can get string lights at thrift stores, especially around Christmas time. They always have them. So the string lights were $13. And this brings our grand total to $93. That is girl boss energy. Hell yeah. One final note before I wrap things up, I wanted to mention the role that certain privileges have played in my ability to use all these strategies. Firstly, and I would say probably most significantly, I am completely able-bodied. I can walk to the thrift store. I can carry furniture home. I can make things. I also have the privilege of free time. I don't have to work overtime. I don't have like a family or kids. I can pretty much spend my free time however I want. Uh, which includes, you know, scouring the thrift store, making stuff. Finally, even though I make very little money, I work in childcare, that really tells you all you need to know. Um, I still live near and know a lot of comfortably middle-class people. That I was brought up in that environment, so I'm still surrounded by a lot of people who can afford to just have extra stuff lying around that they can give away. I just wanted to touch on all those things because I feel like often this type of content that's like, how I accomplished X impossible thing, <laughs> ends up taking the tone of like, there's no excuse not to do this. You're the only thing getting in your own way. I just don't want anyone to leave this video with that impression because it is um, very harmful and not true. That said, I hope these ideas can help you in one way or another. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know what you thought in the comments. And if you have any money saving strategies of your own on this topic or in any topic, honestly, we could all use that. Don't forget to check out my apartment tour. If you haven't yet and you want to see what the apartment that I furnished for tiny three dollars looks like, if you want to support the channel, please do like and comment and subscribe if you want to see more of me. I appreciate you 
personally so much. I'll see you next time. Bye! However, I decided to include it. <laughs> Tip number one, the most obvious, is... Oh, do you, can you hear that? Oh, my foot is falling asleep.